Riva Trademark is divided into six main sections. The name of the current section appears in red, so as you can see, right now we're working with trademarks. To switch to a different section, just click one of these buttons. When you first open the Trademarks form, you may see this, which is a list of all your trademarks. Or, if there are email alerts that are due to be sent, you'll end up here and you'll have the opportunity to send them. We'll talk more about the email alerts a little later. And the list screen works exactly the same way if you open the Patents form or the Trademark Oppositions form. On the list page, the treaty column tells you whether or not the trademark is part of a treaty filing such as the Madrid Protocol. If you see a Y here, it means yes, this trademark was filed under a treaty agreement. And if you see a B, it means this mark was the basis for a treaty filing. The same column also appears on the list screen for patents. On either form, you can sort the list view, you can filter it, and you can print it as a report. You can also choose which columns will appear in the list by clicking this button. To add a column, drag it from this pop-up box to wherever you want it to appear in the grid. To remove a column, just drag it off the grid. To change the position of an existing column, click and hold the column header, drag it to the new position, and drop it. If for any reason you ever want to reset the layout of a grid back to the default, then right-click the grid and click this option. The columns that appear to the left of this marker are the ones that will appear on the report if you print the list. To set the widths of the column on the report, just drag the left edge of the column header like this. If you switch to the Alerts view, you'll see a list of upcoming critical dates that fall within a particular date range. If you're looking at one of these data grids and see one of these little plus signs over here on the left, then you can click that to see more information about that record. You can print the Alerts list. You can filter it by a position, such as the responsible attorney, and you can select the alerts and add them to your Outlook calendar. To open a trademark, just click one of these hyperlinks, and when you do that, you'll end up here on the Owner and Dates page. This page displays the basic trademark information. It also displays a list of trademark dates, any actions you've taken on the trademark, and a list of trademark contacts. With just a couple of mouse clicks, you can select a contact and merge the trademark record into Microsoft Word. You can drop the database fields into your document by selecting them here, and when the document is finished, you can merge the record like this. Or, as you can see here on the Patents form, you can merge the record into an Outlook email. This works exactly the same way in both patents and trademarks. On the More Information page in Trademarks, you can enter the goods and services, the disclaimers, and any comments you want to enter for the trademark record. On the Patents form, these fields are for the abstract, the claims, and the comments. You can also enter a category and subcategory for the patent here. Down in this section, you can create links to important documents and then open them like this. Or you can create links to an entire folder. You can keep a list of any companies that have licensed a trademark or patent here. And over here, you can set a link to the trademark or patent graphic. If you set a link to a graphic, it will appear on the full trademark or patent record when you go to print it. On the Treaty Filings page in Trademarks, you can select a trademark or multiple trademarks to use as the basis application for filing in other jurisdictions. 
The marks you file together are then linked like you see here. When you update the date schedule for any one of these marks, you'll have the opportunity to copy the same dates into the other trademarks as well. In patents, this page does double duty. You can create multiple new records for patents that will be submitted through a treaty filing, just as you can with trademarks. But you can also switch the view to see which patents are linked to other patents by the application process. For example, if we wanted to take this provisional patent and create a new patent record for a full utility patent, we can just fill in the new information here and then click this button. The new record is created and the patents are linked. On the USPTO status check page in Trademarks, you can query the Trademark Office database to see if the status of any of the trademarks you're currently prosecuting has changed. To track the progress of a trademark, go to the Owner and Dates page and select this checkbox. To stop tracking the trademark once it's registered, you can deselect the checkbox. Once you've selected which trademarks to track, you can run a daily status check by going to this page and clicking this button. If the status of the mark has changed since the last time you checked, a record will appear in this grid. And by the way, these trademarks are fictional, but we entered application numbers for actual trademarks just to show how this function works. That's why the status date for our fictional trademarks looks like ancient history. To alert your key staff members if a trademark status has changed, click this hyperlink and the system will generate an email. The dates that appear on your trademark and patent records are determined by templates that you set up in the Preferences section. For trademarks, the dates are specific to each jurisdiction, and for patents, the dates are specific to each jurisdiction and patent type. You can set up different date schedules for as many jurisdictions as you choose. For example, in Jurisdiction USA, we've set the renewal date to occur 10 years after the registration date and a renewal reminder to occur 6 months before the renewal. In Germany, we've set the renewal to occur 10 years after the application date and it's extended to the end of the month. When you update a trademark date, other dates are added or calculated according to how you've set up your templates. And it works pretty much the same for the patent dates. You set up the templates for the different jurisdictions and patent types, and then when you update a patent date, the other dates are added and calculated according to the template. In both patents and trademarks, you can set which date should appear on the alert screen and create automatic emails that are generated for your staff members when critical dates are coming due. These are the emails that show up on the email alert screen that we saw before. You can also create emails that are specific to a trademark or patent date. These would typically be the emails that you would send to your clients. So here on a trademark record, we'll select a client from our contact list, select the date up here, click this option, and then generate the email. The Companies section contains information for all the companies and people you deal with in your practice. That could include clients who own patents and trademarks, foreign counsel, as well as your own company so you can enter your staff members as trademark and patent contacts. If the company is a client that owns patents and trademarks, you'll see a list of those down here. You can open a trademark or patent record by clicking the hyperlinks. In the Reports section, you'll see a list of the available reports over here. To select which report to print, check the box in this column. You can apply any of the filters you see in this section and then preview the records before printing the report. You can filter the records even more by choosing a value from this row in the preview grid. 
Most of the reports are fairly standard, but for the reports that are highlighted in yellow, you can choose which columns you want to appear by clicking this button to add columns, and you can rearrange the columns by dragging and dropping them. As we saw earlier, the columns that appear to the left of this marker are the ones that will show up in the report. You can also create a group report by dragging one or two columns to this area to create the groups. Another option is to export the data to Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel. To do that, select one of these options, click this button to preview the records, then select the fields you want by using the same method we saw before. When you click the Print Report button, the data from the grid will be exported to a table in Microsoft Word. Now you can simply copy this table to another document. And it works the same way if you export the data to Excel. Another option is to create your own spreadsheets within Reva Trademark. To select the records, select Export to Excel in the list of reports and then Preview the records. After you choose and arrange the columns you want in your spreadsheet, you can switch to this page, click the cell where you want the records to begin, and then click this button to import them. By using the custom spreadsheet, you can put multiple record sets on the same spreadsheet or on a different spreadsheet in the same workbook. Once the records are imported, you can add your own text. You can format the spreadsheet by using these formatting buttons. You can choose to add the date and page numbers, freeze the number of rows you want to appear at the top, and then print the report. Or you can save the report out to Excel, and if you do, all the formatting and all the options you've selected here will be copied into the Excel spreadsheet. This is a convenient way to produce a list of trademarks or patents to send to your clients. In the Trademark Opposition section, you can maintain information about any trademarks that have gone into litigation. The alerts view and the automatic email alerts work exactly the same here as they do for trademarks. You can create a new opposition by clicking this button and then filling in the information here, or you can go to the list page in the trademark section, select the trademarks, and click this button. You can set up the opposition date template for your jurisdiction here and then copy it to an opposition record by clicking this button. Then you can simply enter the dates for the litigation. In this section, you can enter the information for your client's trademarks, enter the opposing company's trademarks, and then click this option to see them side by side. Down here, you can choose to view the litigation dates or the actions you've taken on the opposition, and you can link documents and folders just like we saw before. All throughout the system you'll see these blue hyperlinks. The hyperlinks do things like open another form, find trademark and patent records in online databases, or generate an email. Whenever you see one of these you're looking at a delete button. If the delete button is gray instead of red, it means you don't have permission to delete records. All of these functions are covered in the full tutorials, so anytime you need a quick refresher course on how the system works, you can go to the Help menu and choose to watch a video tutorial like the one you're watching now.